We're going to start off our discussion of the kinetic theory of gases by trying to figure out what is the average kinetic energy of a particle uh, within some container, a particle of gas. So we've got this box here. This box has dimensions A, B, and C in the X, Y, and Z directions, if we so choose that to be so. And inside we've got these particles, and each of these represent a gas molecule or atom or whatever the gas happens to be. And each of these particles is going to have some velocity u. So particle 1 has a velocity u1, 2, u2, etc. And these particles aren't going to interact with each other, so there's no potential energy function which says that uh, their orientation or how far they are away from each other affects their potential energy. So their velocities aren't affected by each other, they're only affected by collisions with the, with the boundaries of the box. And those collisions with the wall of the box are going to be perfectly elastic. And that's true if you have the, the particles are in thermal equilibrium with the box, but for now we're just going to go ahead and assume that all these collisions are going to be elastic. So beforehand you got some particle and it's racing towards whatever wall this is. If this is the wall in the x direction, then it's uh, this a wall here. And it has some component of its velocity in the x direction. So uh, the velocity is just a vector sum of the x, y, and z components. So the velocity has some x component, u1x. So if we define our positive x direction this way, then our momentum for particle 1 in the x direction before the collision is mu1x. It's mass times velocity, uh, mass of the particle times its velocity in the x direction. And then it undergoes a perfectly elastic collision with the wall, and it bounces off, and it's going back with the opposite momentum <clears throat> in the opposite direction. So we've got now the momentum afterwards equals minus mu1x. So our change in momentum during that process is obviously the final momentum minus the initial momentum, which as we can see up here is just mu1x minus minus mu1x, which is equal to 2 mass times the velocity in the, the initial velocity in the x direction. Okay, so our momentum changed by twice its initial value. That makes sense. All right, so what we also have is um, our velocity can be defined as a change in displacement uh, over time. So our u1 or u1x can also be calculated by saying the change in displacement of particle 1 in the x direction over some amount of time. So the time that it took in order for this collision to occur, or this collision will occur on average every period of time, which is equal to um, delta d1x over u1x. Okay, so, that, so this particle is going to hit the wall, it's going to bounce off, and it's going to travel however far it travels, and then it's going to come back and it's going to hit this wall again. Okay, so that displacement that it travels during that situation is going to be equal to. Um, I didn't draw this diagram quite the way I wanted to, so let's just roll with the punches and I'll go ahead and say that it traveled 2b during this uh, time here because the dimension of the box in this direction is b and the particle travels b to one wall and then b back to the wall. So in its collision with this A wall here, it's going to travel a distance of 2B, uh, whatever units that's in. Okay, so I'm going to call that 2B over, and then our velocity here is just defined as U1x. Okay, so that is our change in momentum and our change in velocity. So now we say what is the force which act, which acted upon this particle during this collision so what is the force that tells us how the uh, it's going to give us uh, some ideas about what the energy change is so force the force which was acted upon particle one force is 
can be defined as the change in momentum over change in time. So the average force which is going to be acting on this particle due to its collisions with just this wall in particular. Okay, that's going to be, so our change in momentum we here have, have is 2m u1x divided by our uh, change in time here, delta t, which is 2b over u1x. So this is in the denominator, so I'm going to have a 2b, and then I'm going to have a 1 over u1x in my denominator. So that's going to go up to the top, but we've already got a u1x out there, so I'm going to have that be u1x squared. As we can see, uh, those two, those twos are going to cancel out with each other. So the average force which is acting on this particle due to, due to its collisions with just this particular wall is m unx squared over b. Okay, so that's force. So we want to go from force to pressure. So pressure, we know, is defined as force per unit area. So it's the force acting on particle 1 from its collisions with that wall divided by the area of that wall. So that's going to be, we're going to have m u1x squared over. And we have a b here, but what's the area of this wall? So this wall that it's actually colliding with here uh, is going to be a square which ha or a rectangle, more properly, a rectangle which has dimensions a times c. So it's going to be, we already had this b in the denominator, now we have the area of this rectangle which is a times c, so we're going to have a times b times c. But if we notice, um, the volume of this entire box, because these are all uh, these are all right angles to each other inside of this box, the volume of this box is just equal to a times b times c. So we can continue on here and note that our pressure here, which is uh, this is acting on this particle one here with this box, is equal to m u and x squared over volume. Okay, so that's the pressure that this wall feels and also the particle feels. But the pressure that this wall feels due to its collisions with particle one is going to be uh, m u and x squared over, over the volume of the box. Okay, so we want to know not just how it interacts with one particle, we want to know how it interacts with all of them. So the total pressure that the wall feels due to its collisions with the particles is going to be a sum over all the particles, all n particles, of their individual pressures with this, uh, from their collisions with this wall. So in this sum, um, <clears throat> some terms we can pull out here. So this mass is going to be a constant. All of our particles weigh the same. Vol uh, volume is going to be constant. That's the same volume of the box for every particle. So we're going to pull out m and v from the sum. Then we have a sum from i equals 1 up to n of u particle i in the x direction squared. Okay, so we have we have that. Now we have another def we have another quantity that we could define that it can help us out with this sum. So we can define the average square velocity of a particle in the x direction which if you're up on probability, or if you saw the quantum mechanics playlist, you can probably notice that this is, looks like this is an expectation value. So what we can do there is it's just, a, it's just an average of the square velocity of all particles in that direction. So we divide by the number of particles, sum over all of the particles from 1 to n of uix squared. So this sum here is equal to that sum there. All we have to do is throw in an additional factor of n in the numerator to account for this 1 over n in our denominator here. And then we can continue on with our pressure derivation here where we have p. Um, using that, what we're going to have now is that the pressure that the box feels due to all the particles inside of it colliding with it in the x direction is going to be the number of particles times their mass 
times the average square velocity in the x direction, ux squared, bracket, um, divided by the volume of the box. Okay, so a few more things we can assume about the behavior of the particles inside the box. Um, we could have just as easily done this derivation in terms of uh, the y direction or the z direction, and we would have ended up with the same result, um, assuming that the gas is completely isotropic in all directions, and there's no reason to assume that we would prefer that we prefer one direction over another. So we can say that the average kinetic energy in the x direction is, or not kinetic energy, velocity squared in the x direction is equal to the average velocity squared in the y direction, which is equal to the average velocity squared in the z direction. And similarly, because of how velocity works, the average velocity squared is just a sum of the average velocity squared components, so the sum of those components in every dimension, uz. Okay, so according to these two equations, we could substitute those in, and we'll arrive at the equation that our ux squared is equal to one-third of the total velocity squared. So we get one contribution from the y direction, one contribution from the z direction, one contribution from the x direction. So our, our individual component here is one-third of the total velocity squared. Okay, so if we plug that in, and if we also multiply times V on both sides, we'll have pressure times volume is equal to one-third number of particles times mass of those particles times their average uh, velocity squared. Okay, so we can define another quantity, which is going to be our kinetic energy. So we're going to say that kinetic energy epsilon, which we know is equal to, or average kinetic energy epsilon would be one half mass of the particle times average velocity squared. So taking the average velocity squared, multiplying times mass and dividing by two gives us the average kinetic energy. I'll write that out explicitly, average kinetic energy epsilon. Okay, so if we reformulate our P times V here, our P times V is going to be equal to um, substitute in, put another factor of two outside what's going to be the parentheses here. So we're going to have two-thirds N times one-half. So you see how those twos cancel to give us that one-third back. Times one-half M U squared. So you can see now, as I've written it, um, what we have in parentheses here is epsilon. That's our average kinetic energy. So we just multiply both, uh, well, we can multiply both sides by 3, then divide by 2n, and we'll isolate kinetic energy on this side. And we'll get um, from our whole derivation here what the average kinetic energy of a given gas particle is. And that is that that average kinetic energy It's going to be equal to 3 times pressure times volume divided by 2 times the number of particles. So this is the average kinetic energy. Notice that we, uh, well, we did make the assumption here about hard spheres. So, uh, so this was kind of an, an, an a priori assumption that the gas is ideal given that the particles aren't interacting with each other because that's how we got this behavior here where it didn't matter what else was going on in the gas, it just uh, did its thing and then collided uh, collided every so often that every uh, 2b over u1x seconds it collides with the wall. Um, but we're going to take this one step further in the next video and then try to look at one measure of what the average velocity is uh, inside of gases and show that it's actually quite a large value even for most typical gases at room temperature.